Hi everyone, I am uh, Shachaf Bar Geffen of Kodi. We are currency of the internet. Um, quite an established project as you can see. So first off, um, I want to start with a question. Does this work? All right. Um, did anyone here ever try to buy a Bitcoin with a credit card? Doesn't work for me uh, back in Israel. Doesn't work for a lot of people. And if it does, you pay an extra 10% fee. Why? It's because we are all trapped in an old system of the credit card companies. We're all trapped in it. It's an industry ruled by a duopoly for the past 30 to 40 years, generating trillions and trillions of dollars. This is an industry ripe for disruption because there are a lot of mediators that are making money in it. It's just not us or the merchants we're buying from. And that without even mentioning the fact that there are 2 billion people that are unbankable around the world, right? And I'm not just talking about Africa. I hold here a note of $100 trillion in Zimbabwe. It costs about a penny, right? We're trapped within a system of pipes that are so old and so rusty, and we're still running on it because we should have been flying by now. It's 2018, but we are stuck with the old system. But why do we even need that? Why do we even need the credit card companies and the processors and the banks of the world? One word, trust. If I see you and I pay you, we don't need an arbitrator to tell us who we can trust. It's easy. But if we are trying to pay for someone on the other side of the world, we need trust. We need someone that tells us, Hey, he can pay you. He has the money. Trust him. So we need that. But wait. Aren't cryptocurrencies supposed to solve that? Isn't it a trustless system? So why isn't it working? It needs help. Cryptocurrencies need help. The reason we don't have mass adoptions of cryptocurrencies as a means of payments is first, it has a terrible user experience, right? You guys are updated, you know how to use uh, uh, Ether Wallet and so on, but it seems like this interface was built to encourage people not to use it. So it's a terrible user experience. And if I paid with my Bitcoin to buy shoes online and the merchant didn't send me the product, who am I going to call? It's not like I can charge it back, right? So it's a terrible user experience. And it has scalability issues. Visa and MasterCard can transact about 60,000 transactions per second. You know how many Bitcoin can do? Seven. Seven. So Ethereum can do 20. So there are other projects that are trying to improve that, but it has serious scalability issues. And the volatile price. As a merchant, I cannot accept a currency that can drop in its value 50% in two months. It's not happening. It's like receiving Zimbabwean dollars. Doesn't work for me. Regulation. Let's not be naive, all right? We're all decentralists in nature, but let's not be naive. Governments would never allow a form of payment that has no liability to it, right? It will never work as a payment system. So these are all the reasons why cryptocurrencies won't work. And trust is needed in the system. Now, cryptocurrencies solve the issues of trust. It's a trustless system. If you just look at it as a way to know if the other party has a balance to pay you. But it doesn't tell you anything about the behavior of the other side. It doesn't tell you anything about if you are transacting with a trustworthy person out there. It just tells you something about the balance. But payments and paying people is a very intimate thing, and it has a lot to do with trust. It's right there in the US dollar. Trust. In Cody, we think that we can cut the middlemen with regards to trust, and we can disrupt an industry in the trillions of dollars that wasn't disrupted for the last 40 years. There aren't a lot of opportunities out there to disrupt an industry that big 
that is just sitting there. Someone will eat their lunch. So Cody, Cody solves all these issues, and I'll prove it right now, but Cody solves all these issues with the traditional world and the new world of cryptocurrencies. How? Cody is a tech company based out of Tel Aviv, Israel, with branches in, in Gibraltar and around the world that has built a base protocol, not an application. We've built a base protocol called TrustChain. It's the fastest, most scalable blockchain to date, able to go through 10,000 transactions per second, that has implemented within it a trust score mechanism that incentivizes good behavior and trustworthy behavior. And when trust is broken, it allows for a mediation process to take place to restore trust and to amend the chain. So how do we do that? Our tech. Blockchain is a linear system. We love it. It, it, it is the foundation of everything that we see here, but it's not very scalable. It clogs. If you have more users on the network, it works slower, right? We've built our blockchain over what is called DAG, Direct Axilic Graph, all right? Some projects out there do the same thing. It's a very, uh, uh, um, it's a very good structure if you want to have a lot of transactions that are super fast. So DAG, transactions when they go into the DAG structure, they are parallel in nature and more transactions when more transactions hit the cluster, it actually grows faster, like file sharing, right? So with Kodi, as a payment network, the more users, the faster it goes. Trust chains. Now, I won't take you through our entire consensus protocol. You can read about it in our white paper. Make sure that you free a good five hours for that. It's one of the most thoughtful white papers out there. But with a trust chain, each sender assigned with a trust score joins the cluster. And when enough trustworthy transactions approve you, the transaction is validated and cryptocurrency is sent through. If that is not achieved, it does not confirm. Now what happens if I paid for my shoes, I had the balance for that. The merchants just didn't send me my shoes. So what happens now? Who do I call? So with Visa and MasterCard, this is a well thought of process called chargeback. I can just charge back my card. If I'm on PayPal, I just open a dispute, right? And someone takes care of it. I, we have a process for that. But how do you do that on a decentralized system? Who, who is there to, to, do, to do that? So we've built in an incentivized jury working on a proof of stake, right? So I'm opening my dispute saying I did not get my shoes. Now reputable nodes in the system with high trust score actually receive that information, read through that, but when they need to decide, they don't just wing it, they put their money on it. They are putting their Cody on either side, the consumer or the merchant side, and essentially when enough jury made their pledge, the ones that were with the consensus receive their tokens, but the other guys' tokens as well. So this is how we incentivize jury to make the right decisions. Now people ask me, hey, but you know, these are not professional mediators. And I tell them, who do you think makes these deci decisions in MasterCard or Visa? Do you think it's ex-judges? No, it's not it's just everyday people, usually with, low, usually with low wage and very little incentive to judge right. So now we're asking professional crypto people to make these decisions and they get paid for that. So this is how we resolve disputes on our network and are actually able to regain more trust in the cryptocurrency payment system. So don't think of blockchain anymore. Think of trust chain. Another thing to solve, of course, is the terrible user experience. So we've built in an app that is so user-friendly and so simple, anybody can use it. 
right? We've built consumer protection, as I told you about it. We've solved scale and speed, and you can see that in our simulations, and I invite you to see that, how we can process 10,000 transactions per second and reach essentially infinite scale. Now, when it comes to hedging, I told you, as a merchant, I don't want to receive anything that can fluctuate in value. We've built in a hedging surface, hedging service, excuse me, essentially allowing any merchant to protect the value of his coins for 30 days for very little commission. All right? And we've built a marketplace to support that. Now, we are regulation neutral. In a sense, it means that we don't allow for any regulation arbitrage to take place. We don't think and we don't believe governments will allow any form of payments to take place if there is no accountability. So we've built Cody to be regulation neutral. What does it mean? It means that we are one of the few companies that have applied for a license, a DLT license in Gibraltar and actually received it. And we're applying for licenses around the world to make sure that we are in par with what regulation needs. Because this is the only way cryptocurrencies will essentially uh, uh, receive mass adoption. So just to compare on all parameters, all right, what you will see is that we've taken what was best from the traditional system and combined it with what, was, what is best with cryptocurrencies to make Cody the best payment system to date. All right, because we don't think that if you try to innovate something, you just go and burn whatever was there before you and build something new. That is not the way to innovate. All right, you need to take what was best in what happened earlier. So this is how we build Cody. Now, we're not just building Cody as a cool based protocol or just a cool tech company. We're already building it as a business. So we've planned a very good go-to-market strategy when it comes to the payment industry. How? First of all, we are building a full ecosystem. We're going to have our coin, mind you, not a token, because it's based on our protocol, not on Ethereum. On top of it, we are building a wallet and an app. We are releasing an exchange by the end of this year. And in our exchange, if you have Cody's, you don't pay any fees. That will grant us independency. Now, in our exchange, of course, you can transact on top 20 coins. And Cody will not be traded only on our exchange. But it gives us the flexibility and independence that we need. And to add all of that, we are going to have our own debit card. Not a debit card that has, says Visa on it and then Cody. Our own debit card. It is achieved by partnerships that we have already signed with, with a bank, with an issuing bank. We've also signed in a partnership with Processing.com, one of the largest processors in the world, right, coming from North America, that gives us a go-to to 10,000 merchants. That is already signed and ready. And merchants want to use Cody because of three main reasons. First of all, it gives them better liquidity. Now, I don't know if you are aware of that because I assume most people in the room are not merchants. But as a merchant, you send away a product and you get paid about three weeks later. Not all of it. A processor and a credit card company may keep almost 10% of your money for almost two years as a rolling reserve. With Cody, they get paid instantly. So that gives them better liquidity and better way to do their business. More transactions. Now, I don't know how many times you got your card declined, but that is happening around the world every day, many, many times because of lack of trust and because of the, that each time we process our card, it goes through seven to eight mediators. Each is a point of failure and each is allowed to decline the deal. When that happens, a merchant just lost an opportunity. In some industries, it's about 80% of all transactions. So we allow them, because of our trust protocol, to essentially transact on every transaction. They will never lose an opportunity again. Now, because we've built it as a trustless system, fees are negligible. 
so they make more money. So this is the real value we give merchants. Higher revenue, because they don't miss opportunities, lower costs, it comes down to their bottom line, better profit. Our go-to verticals are verticals that are in real need. These are the sort of verticals that get a lot of card declined. Okay, so it's travel, global e-commerce, pharma, and so on and so forth. This is the sort of talent that have joined Cody. All right? Um, we have here in, in the audience Stephen Haleborn, of, uh, former CEO of Investec Bank. Uh, we have Greg Kidd, first, uh, first investor in Twitter, Coinbase, Square, uh, you name it. Um, Dr. Matt McBrady, former chief investment officer of BlackRock, and a team of hyper-talented engineers, scientists, mathematicians, all supporting Cody, all part of, of our team. And of course, founders of the payments industries are working in Cody. So I think we have it all. We have team, we have technology, and we have an amazing opportunity out there, a $2 trillion opportunity. And please remember that when you introduce trust into an old industry, you get something fairly new. But please remember, we are not a payment company. Cody is a tech company that has built a base protocol. That protocol can be used in many other industries we intend to disrupt in the next coming years. It's insurance, it's money transmissions, it's air tech, remittance, high frequency trading, you name it. I have one minute for any questions that you may have, and I can be achieved on this email. Please. Excuse me? So merchant acquiring, as I said, we're going to, we have lined up 10,000 merchants, and the rest can join us as easily as downloading an app and receive our debit card. You ask him if we, are te if we have tested our transaction per se? Yes, yes, we had. Yeah, we're going to release an online version that you all can uh, uh, see and test it with it uh, yourself. Excuse me? Reference, we are, we are not releasing uh, merchants' names right now, uh, but we're going to do that in the next coming month. I, I can hear you. Yes, it is. Merchants, as, as we analyze trust and risk, uh, we keep something that can be paid back. <laughs> 